So, a very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems. We are talking about simulating random processes and right now in starting this lecture, we will touch upon the last topic to be covered in this chapter that is Markov chains. So, till now we have talked about continuous valued random processes or random processes that can take any value at any value and uh, we have seen these uh, manifest in the form of autoregressive processes, moving average processes and so on, but uh, or uh, these are the continuous random variable equivalents of random processes. But like there are discrete random variables and continuous random variables, there can be a discrete valued random process. So, there can be a discrete valued random process as well. And uh, one example of a discrete valued random process, one prominent example of a discrete valued random process that is quite useful for our course is the Markov chain or you can think of it uh, as an autoregressive model that can take values from a countable set. So, like all random processes, let us denote by xn and let from subset of non negative integers fine and the values that this process takes are known as the states of the process and this. So, if the random process x n take values from a set whose cardinality is L, then it is an L state Markov chain and this x n equals i, this indicates the event of x n, the random process x n being in the ith state at time n. So, naturally since uh, x n equals i indicates the process, indicates the event of the process being in the ith state at time n, then naturally there is a, so put on the slide here to allow us better room for discussion. So, since x n i is one of the L possible events at n, naturally there is a associated with it. Naturally, there is a probability x n equals i associated with it and this probability k 
can be independent of the states that Xn has been in the past. One simple thing is that uh, or one simple way to think of a discrete valued random process is that you imagine that uh, you generate a random number independently from a set and uh, or uh, you generate each xn xn for all n can be drawn independently from the same can be drawn independently from the same set. Hence, there is no specific structure to this random process and this is just a, hence it corresponds to a ID sequence of discrete corresponds to an ID sequence of discrete random variables 1. So, 2 probability of Xn equals I is actually dependent on all the past states that Xn has been through or all the history of Xn naturally that uh, becomes hard to imagine but uh, that is the other extreme. A Markov chain in this way is kind of the middle ground because so the second thing it, this requires no memory of the past or this you can say has no memory of the past this has infinite memory of the past. A Markov chain is defined as chain is a discrete valued random process that depends on just one past state that is the probability of Xn taking specific value only depends on the value taken by Xn minus 1 and hence the probability of Xn taking a given value probability is summation j goes from 1 to n so let me actually use another slide maybe draw a box here So, this comes from the Bayes theorem and uh, the probability of Xn being in state i given that Xn minus 1 was in state j times the probability that Xn minus 1 was in state 
j summed over all states or summed over all j. So, this is the probability and for a Markov chain this p i j or in case of a Markov chain we denote probability of x n plus 1 being i and x n being j by this and naturally this we consider this as a wide sense stationary process. So, this is equivalent to probability of x n and x n minus 1 here. So, this is a stationary process. So, the probabilities remain independent of time and an example of a Markov chain is that if it has rained today then it will rain tomorrow with a probability alpha and if it has not rained today then it will rain tomorrow with a probability beta. So, this information and I give you another information say that p n say the probability of it raining today is p and the probability of it not raining today is q or 1 minus p. Then naturally of rain tomorrow equals probability of rain today plus time probability of rain tomorrow given rain today plus probability of no rain today probability of rain tomorrow if no rain today and you can see that these can be represented nicely the probabilities in a Markov chain can be represented nicely in terms of a matrix whose ijth entry is p i j. So, another example this is not uh, exactly a Markov chain, but uh, say bits are transmitted in a communication system. We will revisit this example when we talk about uh, data transmission through communication systems, but say bits are transmitted with probabilities q and 1 minus q. So, probability q is 1 is transmitted with probability q 0 is transmitted with 0 is transmitted with probability 1 minus q then probability of receiving a 1 received is probability of 1 transmitted times probability of no error plus probability of 0 transmitted times probability of error. So, p small p here denotes the probability of error. So, this is q times 1 minus p plus p times 1 minus q and probability of 0 received is p times q that is 1 is transmitted and there is an error plus 0 is transmitted and there is no error. So, these are the received probability. So, naturally these are very simple examples and we can uh, look at more complicated examples as we will uh, or we will look at more complicated examples as we continue through this course. So, now the question is that uh, how do we form a Markov chain that uh, given that uh, there is a random process or there is a process that uh, we understand uh, satisfies these criteria that uh, it is discrete valued process and discrete in time and uh, it has multiple states and it can randomly take uh, one of those states. So, how do we use this information or how do we organize uh, our thoughts into forming a Markov chain? We have seen two examples where the system had two states rain and no rain and it went from rain to no rain with the probability. So, actually this should have come later or these examples should have come later. So, it has rained tomorrow, so rain today, today this should be I will correct this now. 
So, actually let us in order to find out uh, or in order to use this example, let us use this example here that will make our life easier. So, if it has rained today, then it will rain tomorrow with a probability alpha and if it has not rained today, then it will rain tomorrow with a probability beta. So, in this world life is stuck within two. So, x is a random variable that tells you the state of rain. X is a random variable that tells you the state of rain and obviously there are only two possible states rained or on a given day there are only two possible states no rain there is no such thing as partial rain so if it rains partially it still rains so it's rain so rain or no rain so now it says that if it has rained today then it will rain tomorrow with a probability alpha so at time n if it has rained then at n plus 1 it will rain with a probability alpha so the probability of going from rain to sorry the self edge this is a self edge so the probability that uh, it goes from a rainy day to another rainy day so i can say rainy day no rainy day so the probability that it goes from a rainy day to a rainy day is alpha and naturally the probability that it goes from a rainy day to a non rainy day is 1 minus alpha similarly the probability that uh, it goes from a non rainy day to a rainy day is specified as beta and the probability that it goes from a non rainy day to a non rainy day is 1 minus beta. So, the first thing is we identify the possible states of the system. So, the possible states of the system were 2 rainy and non rainy. The transitions were rainy to non rainy, rainy to rainy, non rainy to non rainy and uh, non rainy to rainy those had probabilities we have uh, identified the corresponding probabilities and uh, thus we have formed a Markov chain in this case. Obviously, there are more complicated examples that we will deal with in the next lecture. So, that is all for now and uh, we will continue talking about Markov chains and uh, more complicated examples in the next lecture. Thank you. Mm -hmm.